What is artificial intelligence? Have you heard people talking about a website called ChatGPT? Have you seen videos around social media of people getting websites to write essays or poems? Have you seen some websites where you give it keywords and it generates a picture for you? Well, this is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, or AI, refers to the ability of computers and machines to perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence, such as recognizing patterns and making decisions. AI systems learn from experience and large amounts of data, and their goal is to create programs that make it possible to automate certain tasks and help do things more efficiently. Basically, AI refers to making computers smart and able to do things that normally only humans could do. People tend to think of artificial intelligence as something new, but if you've played a computer game against a computer or seen items recommended to you on your Netflix or YouTube account, then you've already experienced AI. Playing against a computer is simply a program designed to recognize the rules of the game and make predictions and plans based on a data set of rules. Your Netflix account recommends shows to you based on shows that you have watched previously, how much of each show you have watched, and also basing it on what others like if they watch shows similar to you. It makes recommendations to you like any human would based on all this data. Before the internet, most people were in the age of training, where you had to memorize your information or learn a specific skill set because the information was difficult to get. People kept their own cookbooks for recipes and learned facts. Successful people in this age memorized information and mastered a particular skill. The internet changed things by bringing us into the age of information, where data, facts and information is freely available and so we don't have to memorize everything, but those that are successful have to learn how to sift through these large volumes of data and how to find information and identify what information is good and what is bad. And now we are entering the age of knowledge, where computers can simplify or gather knowledge from this information for us. But the successful people of your generation will be those that can use AI to complement their skills and add value to what AI produces. Anyone can get AI to produce knowledge, but the new skills society will need are those that can take out what is not necessary or wrong and then add value to it. ChatGPT is an example of an artificial intelligence and it is a chatbot designed to simulate a conversation with a human. You give it a question or task and it will generate human-like text based on the input you give. Essentially, it's like having an extremely knowledgeable and well-spoken digital assistant that can answer questions, write articles or even have a conversation with you. Artificial intelligence is not perfect, however. They can be biased because the information they give you is based on its large data set, but we don't know what that all includes or even excludes. This means that the quality of the information that it generates can be influenced by others and can be incomplete or even inaccurate. There are privacy concerns. AI algorithms often require large amounts of personal data to train and operate. Where is it getting this data from? And what is it doing with the data you give it? There is currently a lack of regulation around AI. Not everyone has access to the technology and governments and organizations may take too long to implement safe and best practices for AI. This means it could be exploited and increase inequalities. There is also a lack in human reasoning. AI systems are not capable of thinking in the same way that humans do, which can sometimes lead to errors or ignoring common sense. AI systems may struggle to make ethical decisions as they lack the capacity for empathy or understanding emotions accurately and becoming too dependent on it, if people rely too much on AI, they may stop using their critical thinking and problem solving skills. They may use it to pretend to be someone that they are not, and just because an AI can do something doesn't mean you shouldn't learn how to do that skill without the use of AI. The last point is a big reason why many people are concerned about how AI will affect education and how students will use it. The key word when using AI is to use it to supplement what you can do already and not replace you to help you achieve the task and not to do it for you. Let's take this example. You have a sum to do for maths homework and you don't know how to do it, so you use ChatGPT. Now you have the answer, but you still don't know how to factorize a trinomial. The goal of your homework is not to complete the sums, but to learn and understand the process. And so you might think that you have completed the task, where in fact you haven't learned the skill at all. What if we rather use this prompt? Now, this is way more constructive, as I'm helping my understanding and learning process. I'm using the AI to add value, to supplement my knowledge, and not replace me. On a side note, did you notice that in both prompts, the answer that it gave for the factorizing was different, and both of those answers were incorrect? That's why it's so important that you double check your work. At least the second prompt gave you an outline of how to solve it. So if you had used it, you would have probably figured out that that answer was incorrect. The first prompt didn't help you at all. So you need to double check your work.
If I keep using the previous way, then when exam comes, I will not be able to factorize the trinomial. And so I've gotten away with it with my homework, but it'll catch up with me in tests and exams when the stakes are higher. It's like if you want to run a 10 kilometer marathon and you train by using a car to travel the 10 kilometers every time. When it comes to the time of the marathon, you will not be able to do it as well as driving a car and you will not be prepared to do it well in general. So here is my suggestion on how to use AR to supplement and add value to what you already can do. Before you start using an AR, first start with a clear understanding of the problem you want to solve or the task you want to complete. This will help you clearly define what prompts you will give the AR as this is a skill in itself in order to get the most from AR. You then use the prompts to create an example or list of ideas to work from or a skeleton or framework of all the content. Once you have the framework, you then check that the content is correct. AR doesn't always have access to all data, so you might get inaccurate information. Use AR to generate new insights and recommendations, but always make sure to validate these results with human judgment. And then refine and edit content that is not appropriate for what you have in mind. And then add and build to the existing framework the rest of the content that you can create yourself. Continue this process until you have completed the task according to your goal. Let's take another example. You need to write an essay on the impact of the internet on business. So instead of getting an AI to do the essay for you and you learning nothing, rather use it to get ideas or help. Now we pick a topic we like and ask for some ideas about the different paragraphs. Now we can go and write the essay. Afterwards, you can copy it into ChatGPT to check the grammar or spelling or even ask for suggestions or changes they would make to the essay. This way, you are using the AI to supplement your ability while you still learn. You can still do it without AI, it's just adding value to your process. There may be times that the AI is not available or it's inaccurate, so you need to still develop the skills and add human creativity to your work. And so if you use AI, use it to supplement what you can do and use it to help you to learn. So you can go to chat.openai.com slash chat. To access ChatGPT, you will need to register to be able to access it. Take note, it's not always available. Sometimes it's in high demand and so then you can't use it. Let's see some examples of how you can use it to help you with your learning. If you're doing a literature book, like for example, the picture of Dorian Gray, and you need a list of all the characters just to help you with your studying, then this is a good way to use it to give you a nice summary. And there you can see it's busy creating the content for you, giving you a nice structure of who the characters are in the book. You will then have to go double check that it's accurate, but that can also be part of your learning process. And it's a good skill to learn. So there's my list of characters. You can even ask it to create a table of the information that you wanted to summarize. Like in this case, the differences between memory and storage in computer terms. And it will display the data in a nice table format, which you can use to create a little note for yourself to help you with your learning. So there's my table. You can also use it to define words. Like for example, we want to define the word volatile. And it will explain the definition to you. I'm going to ask it to explain the steps involved in using trigonometry to solve right angle triangles. I'm using prompts that are going to help give me information that can help me with my understanding of the content, not to just do the work for me, but to add value to my knowledge. And so now I've got a nice little document with some steps and how I can solve right angle triangles. And I can double check if this is what I like, or I can regenerate a new response if I don't like it to see what other options it comes with. I'm going to ask it now to create a table based on the rules for calculating sine, cos, and tan. And there's my table that I can use for my study. Maybe you need ideas for an oral or for a monologue in class, and you really aren't feeling very creative, so you can even use it to give you some ideas. So in this case, we're asking for famous speeches or iconic dialogues from movies, and let's see which options it comes with. It can even help to give us ideas when we are struggling to be creative. Now let's try this. I'm going to ask it to create a study plan for my exams. I'm giving it exactly the details that it needs. So try to be as specific as you can. So I'm telling it when I'm writing the exams, how long they are, what time they start. I'm asking for it to start the plan on Saturday through to Friday and include the details for when the exams are being written. I want two hour breaks after exams so I can get home and recover. But I need to study between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. That's my range of study time and include times for lunch and suppers. So let's see what it does. And so there you can see it's starting to develop a nice little study plan, giving you the hours of what you should study which subject.
And so there's completed my plan. You can see all of the days are included with a nice little breakdown of what I can do. And it includes when I'm writing the exams. So it's quite comprehensive. And then you can take this and adapt it. Maybe you don't like what they're doing on a Saturday. You want to adapt it, but you can tweak it to what you feel is best. But at least you've got a skeleton now to work from. I'm actually going to ask it to put it in a table format so it's easier for me to read. And so there we go, it's done. So this is an example of an error that it's created, but you can see the general layout looks pretty good and we can always regenerate the response if we want. Or you can click over here on your prompt and you can save and submit and get it to resubmit it. And there you can see it's trying to create the timetable in a different format because we asked it to regenerate it. So these are the types of things that you can do with ChatGPT. AI is a rapidly growing technology that has the potential to greatly impact and improve our lives. As students, it is important to have a basic understanding of AI and how it works. By using AI ethically and wisely, you can take advantage of its benefits while avoiding its potential negative consequences. Being responsible and informed, AI can help you achieve your goals and make a positive impact in the world. Whether you're interested in technology or science or any other field, understanding AI will be a valuable asset in your future and those that learn how to integrate it into their lives will have the tools to be successful. So keep learning and exploring the possibilities of this technology and ensure that you are not using it to replace you but to supplement what you can do already and make you more efficient in completing tasks and to help you understand and learn. For more computer terms, make sure that you click on that subscribe button so that you get notifications whenever we post a new video. Leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear what videos you want us to make next. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.